come my way. This was one that I was like, this has to, this has to happen because I appreciate the, the on purpose aspect of everything that you do. And, uh, it's like, you know, this is it. This is why we do it. Right. This is why we do everything. So thank you, man. No, thank you, man. That means a lot coming from yeah. you, definitely. And I want to dive into so many areas of your life today. And I, and I want you to start with what you just said now. Like, when did you get to that point where you realized everything was about service and on purpose? And how did you get there? I don't think I'm there. I think that's one of the things we'll probably uncover is I don't think we ever really get there. I think that there have been moments in my life that were both caused by me, uh, uh, making poor decisions that led me to a path of having no choice, but to realize that this life is not about me. And then there were things that happened that were just completely, completely out of my control. But I, I don't know if we ever get to a place where we realize that life's just about service because that's just not the way that the ego works and the way that our brains are built to work. So I feel like I'm every morning I wake up some days I get it. And then there's some days that I don't. And the days that I don't, it's about then making sure I wake up the next morning and seeing if I can get it. And I think that's just the journey that is life, right? It's just, no, I don't think we ever arrived. Maybe you have arrived. If, if, if anybody, maybe you have, uh, but I definitely have not. Um, so yeah, man, I, I think that it was a combination of a lot of things. So I'm with you. I've not arrived either. I, I completely mm -hmm. agree with that. I think you have to, we have showers every day because we get dirty. We have to brush our teeth every day because mm -hmm. they get dirty. We have to eat every day because we get hungry. And so we have to feed our souls and minds and consciousness yeah. every day too, in the same way. In my faith, there's a, there's a quote that says, uh, at the end of each day, we have to take ourselves into account. Mm. Um, and we have to look at all the things that we did that would be pleasing to God and then ask for strength to do better. And then look at the things that we did that day that were about us and maybe would be displeasing and ask for the strength to do better. Right. Um, so we want to repeat the things that we did well, but we want to do better and, you know, improve on the previous day. And that's it. Little by little, day by day. That's what we're told. Yeah. So, you know. And I'm both of those things that you said there are so important because you have to know what you're doing well too, right? You got to repeat those again and make them happen again in your life. And that can't happen if we don't reflect. And if you don't actually think about, like, I love the idea of taking things into account. I'm a Baha'i, by the way. And, yes, yes, yes. And uh, so this idea of like taking ourselves into account, the actual quote is that take ourselves into account um, as one day we'll be summoned to a reckoning, mm. right? Or thou art summoned to a reckoning. This idea of like, we're going to have to like look at our lives and all the things that we've done and all the decisions that we've made, whether they be for us or for somebody else, the pain that we've caused. And one day we will have to, we'll have a reckoning with all of those things. So by taking ourselves into account every day, right? Little by little, we're like, we're kind of like, uh, being proactive in that process and not waiting until the day we're standing under, you know, before our creator and having to do the same thing. So, uh, so yeah, man. So then you mix in our business and this industry and, and all the interesting things that come with it. And you're like, you know, it's a battle every single day, which is why I say, I'm still trying to figure it out and work on it just like everybody else. Yeah. But that's what fascinates me so much. And what I love about what you do is that you're able to be in an industry that's seen a certain way that may function a certain way, but you're able to bring that soul to it and you're working hard to bring that service element to it. And that's when I first reached out to you and I kind of want to go back there because I think you've done so many interesting things in your career and your journey. And, and I'm sure many people already know about some of them, but even if they don't, I want to highlight them and unpack those stories with you. But when I reached out to you, I saw you had given this Ted talk about being man enough. And, and I looked and I was just like, wow, here's a guy's like, you know, from the perspective you were talking about it, like you've been an actor asked to play very alpha male roles. And then you're looking and reflecting and taking into account. Yeah. And, and you're noticing and you're observing that like, oh, wait a minute, this isn't me. Like I've almost been pretending to play roles and be someone that I'm not. How did you start unpacking that and that journey to get to that talk? First of all, that talk was, I, st I think I still have PTSD from that talk in the sense that it was one of the scariest things I've ever done, especially at Ted women, like yeah. being in a room with 1500 of some of the world's most powerful women and then being a man and giving a talk that's like feminine, fe uh, feminist adjacent. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I, and then also the Ted stage talk about self doubt. Like what do I have to offer the Ted community? Right. I'm an expert in nothing except myself. And even that I'm trying to, you know, figure out. Um, 
So I, <laughs> that was a, that was a hell of an experience. And my son was born eight days or nine days before that. Um, and we were shooting Jane and it was just this crazy time. But I think for me, it was about, look, you get to, you get to Hollywood and Hollywood decides what they want you to be. Right suddenly I'm playing these characters and I'm auditioning for these characters that couldn't be farther from the way that I viewed myself. And also, uh, these are characters I'm playing the types of people that also made my life very difficult when I was younger and caused me a lot of pain. Uh, so I realized early on, I remember calling my first manager, uh, <laughs> sent me an audition and like the title was like uh, super hot. <laughs> And I, 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 I remember I called him and I was like, I don't, I think you sent this to the wrong person. I don't think you're I, like, cause it just wasn't how I saw myself. And I was a bit of an ugly duckling and I, you know, girls never really liked me and all the things grew at the wrong times and eyebrows weren't cool back then. And definitely not the big nose. And I was super skinny and very insecure and had acne and you name it, like braces in high school. Um, and I was bullied a lot and I was picked on a lot and I would compensate um, with overconfidence when I was younger, but all those boys from the time when I was in elementary school, uh, to even, I still struggle with it today. I always felt like I wasn't included. Like I wasn't a part of the group. Like I wasn't a man, like I wasn't man enough. Right. And then suddenly I found myself being looked at from a superficial lens as one of those guys. So I was inducted into the club because at some point in my early twenties, I, I finally like grew into myself maybe, but it was never comfortable. 